check it out. They've been on the move. There's that big blue bus that Dej was talking about. And tonight we are getting our first look inside this mobile COVID-19 vaccination unit. The bus spent the day in Hampshire meeting folks who otherwise might not be able to travel to get the shot. Yeah, and when others who fall under groups 1A and 1B heard about this new site, they hopped on board too. 12 News reporter Amelia White explains the difference it's making. My parents are old, they're vaccinated, but I just want all of us to be safe. So Adidia Paul Nicker drove all the way from Houston to roll up his sleeve. I was looking online to see if there was anything within like an hour-ish driving distance from where I lived, and I saw this on the news, so I decided to give the, the mobile clinic a call. Since Paul Nicker has an underlying health condition, he was able to take advantage of the Jefferson County Public Health Department's mobile medical unit. He met the bus today in Hampshire. They're saying it's so convenient because we're here in their communities, you know, maybe five minutes from their house and or even at their church and, and that's the goal. Kaylee Bennett, a family nurse practitioner, says their top priorities remain the elderly, medically vulnerable and underserved communities. The way definitely to get more people vaccinated and especially those who are hesitant to drive or who don't have transportation to drive far that they can we can go to their communities, we can get the vaccine. Folks who made an appointment lined up starting at 9 this morning for their shot of hope. Bennett says the mobile vaccine unit is an innovative way to speed up the vaccination process and meet people where they are. And, you know, their neighbors can come. Everybody, you know, that's in the community sees other people getting it and then they're more likely to get it as well. Bus has two more stops to make. One in Nome and one in Nederland. The dates and locations are on your screen. Don't worry, the blue bus will be back to make sure people get their second doses. And then they won't have to go far to get their second vaccine as well. Type of access and convenience, Aditya says the community desperately needs. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12th News. All right, Amelia, and some new info here at 6. Orange County will host a walk-up COVID-19 vaccine clinic on Saturday. This is for Orange County residents who are 65 and older. Shots will be administered from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Orange County Expo Center. The shots are divided up across the day based on your last name. You can see the schedule and when you should arrive. Supplies are limited and organizers say they'll reschedule if they run out. Vaccinations are picking up speed across the state, but Texas still lags behind the rest of the country, with less than 17% of the population receiving at least one shot. Less than 9% are fully vaccinated, but help's on the way. 800,000 more doses are coming to Texas next week. And starting Monday, people in Group 1C can get vaccinated. That's anyone 50 years and older. If you want to sign up for a vaccine, we have that info on our website, 12newsnow.com. And let's talk more, Dejanique, about that Phase 1C. Uh, it will include adults 50 to 64, but it does not include essential workers. Eric Alvarez talked with a grocery store owner in North Texas who's working really hard to get his employees protected. Business is booming at Neighbors House Grocery in downtown Fort Worth. And we, on a daily basis, interact with three to 500 people. That many customers is exactly why co-owner Kyle Cowan says frontline workers should have access to the COVID-19 vaccine. It's important for people that are out there every day in front of customers. Thankfully, most of his employees are already protected. We're about 75% vaccinated. But a lot of frontline workers aren't quite so lucky. On Wednesday, the state of Texas announced starting March 15th, adults as young as 50 would be eligible for the vaccine. The CDC recommended essential workers like food service employees be included too. But as of now, the state is restricting phase 1C to Texans 50 years and older and those at risk of serious medical complications. The Texas Restaurant Association says, thankfully, restaurant workers over 50 will soon be eligible, but believes all frontline restaurant workers should be as well. And the TRA will continue to advocate for others to be added as soon as possible. It's been an incredibly difficult year. Kelsey Erickson Storyford of the TRA says until vaccines are more widely available, the association will protect workers by continuing to promote COVID safety in Texas restaurants. We're looking forward into the future, particularly with vaccines getting rolled out, but we're at the same time, let's make sure that we are continuing to promote safe practices in our spaces, making sure that everyone knows what we still need to do to keep everyone safe. Meanwhile, Cowan says frontline workers should be next in line. Being able to be vaccinated just gives those folks peace of mind that, you know, they can come to work and do their job without having to worry about what's standing across from them. In Fort Worth, I'm Eric Alvarez. In tracking hospitalizations in Southeast Texas, our total COVID patient count has fallen to 70. That's the lowest we've seen in four months. 
COVID patients make up 20% of the people in ICU and 10% of those in regular rooms. Now regionally, the total hospitalization rate for COVID patients is at 12.1%. And I believe this is, and most people I think do as well, this historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country a fighting chance. President Biden today signing his American Rescue Plan into law. The package includes $1,400 stimulus checks for most Americans, and that money could start hitting our bank accounts this weekend. The president will deliver his first primetime address to the nation since taking office tonight. You can watch it right here on KBMT ABC, a little less than an hour away. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock. We'll also be streaming it for you live on 12newsnow.com. New tonight, the city of Nederland is considering applying for aid from the state to help homeowners who may be suffering financially during the pandemic. But first, they need to determine the need. So they're hosting a workshop Friday, March 19th, for anyone interested. It'll be at the Nederland City Hall, located on North 12th Street. It starts at 515. The program can pay up to six consecutive months for all or part of a household's mortgage. Now, this program is only intended for homeowners, not renters. All right, it's another warm and muggy evening around southeast Texas. This is the view from the roofing 911 Skycam over at the Horseman's Western Store. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn looking ahead to the weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. What are we thinking weather-wise? I think that uh, the weekend looks pretty good, at least on Saturday. Sunday, we could see some showers and storms across the area. We'll detail that in just a minute. But as you can see, temperatures are near 70 in Port Arthur to the mid-70s pretty much everywhere else. Abundant cloud cover. But how about that? We have a few sprinkles on radar. Now you understand why I want a 10% coverage today. And guess what? I'll go a 10% tomorrow and tonight across southeast Texas. It should be light. We'll go from 70 at 7 p.m. down to 67 at 11 p.m. And uh, again, rain chances slim to none coming up Friday, Saturday. Sunday's our best chance of rain over the next 7 to 10 as a front moves in, stalls on Monday, then heads back to the north as a warm front on Tuesday ahead of another cold front that will bring us beautiful weather as we finish out next week. Lawmakers are still trying to get to the bottom of last month's winter storm. From the blackouts to the decision that eventually cost one of the biggest electricity providers in Texas to go bankrupt. Part of the issue was a $16 billion pricing error by ERCOT. Former CEO Bill Magnus told lawmakers that ERCOT chose to keep the electricity rate maxed out for nearly two days after they had stopped adding to controlled outages. He says he was trying to be strategic to keep the lights on. We needed to maintain the consistency of the system. We needed to maintain the integrity of the system in any way we possibly could in the face of a lot of risks that we didn't feel like we could mitigate effectively in very many ways. And so it was a judgment call. It absolutely was. The Public Utility Commission of Texas has appointed a new director specifically for ERCOT accountability to oversee the grid operator.